If we're looking at ionic compounds that contain polyatomic ions, the naming is actually pretty straightforward, as long as you know the names of the polyatomic ions. So it's the same basic idea that we've been using. Um, we're going to just use the name of the cation, which usually for all of our metals, which are most of the cations you're going to be dealing with, is just the name of the element. And you may need to add the Roman numeral to specify which charge it is. Uh, so let's say plus Roman numeral if necessary. And most of our polyatomic ions are just going to, you're just going to use the name of the polyatomic ion. And one nice thing is that these polyatomic ions um, always have a specified charge um, because we give a name to that specific uh, combination of atoms with this specific charge. And so you just need the, the name of it. In the formula, we need to specify how many of that polyatomic ion is there. We generally are not going to need that in the, the name that we use for it. Let me just explain with some examples. I think that'll be the easiest way to do this. So let's say that we're combining sodium, which is a singly, pot, singly charged. Uh, sodium shows up a lot. We're going to see it a lot as a, as a cation. And we'll use this polyatomic ion from our list, which is sulfate. All right. If we combine these in a formula, we need to remember to keep the charges neutral. So to write the formula, we're going to need two of these because this only has a plus one charge, whereas this has a minus two charge. So we need to balance out the charges. So our formula is going to be Na2SO4. Now, how do we name this? We use the name of the cation, sodium. The sodium ion doesn't, we don't need Roman numerals for this one because it's always a plus one charge because it's, a, it's in that first column of the periodic table. And then we just use the name of the cat of the anion, which is the, that polyatomic ion. It just has a name, you, you, there's something you're gonna have to memorize, but sodium sulfate, done. We don't have to specify that there were two sodiums because you can figure that out from the charges. These always have the same charges. Uh, and so that's the name. And you can be able to go back and forth between this name and this formula um, using these rules. Uh, let's, uh, let's do one more example. Uh, let's pick something where the charges are a little bit different. So we'll, we'll pick something with a plus two charge. Uh, let's do calcium, Ca2 plus. And then we'll do a, a polyatomic ion that has a, a negative three charge, uh, phosphate, PO4, three minus. So this is named phosphate. You can look this up in, in, in the, the list of ions that I gave you. Now, the name of this when we combine these is simply going to be calcium phosphate. So the naming part is actually not hard at all here. Just the name of the cation, name of the anion. Calcium is one that always has the same charge, so we don't need the Roman numerals. But we need to figure out how can we get this to be electrically neutral. Uh, now, we have a plus two charge and a minus three charge. Those don't add up to zero. Uh, so we need to figure out the, the easiest way to get there. So if we have, say, two of these, then, then we have a negative six. Uh, and we would need three of these give positive six for it to all balance out. So our formula is going to be Ca3PO4. And then this is the, the key thing here is that for polyatomic ions, we put parentheses around the whole ion to emphasize that there are two phosphate whole units. Um, and that'll have a two on it. So calcium phosphate uh, and is, is this formula and the name, you can go back and forth between these. We'll get more practice with this. Here's a, just a couple of examples, but with the polyatomic ions, it's pretty straightforward. You just need to use the, the name of the polyatomic ion.